Does it work? The Namib Desert in southwest Africa is one of the hottest and driest places on Earth. It's home to a unique array of plant and animal life. Solitary hyenas patrol the barren dunes, which are constantly changing, moving, and sometimes roaring. of the last of the Skeleton Coast Park's lions has strengthened Des and Jen Bartlett's resolve to preserve this unique habitat. These rock engravings were made thousands of years ago. They reveal that elephants once lived here. Until recently, their mere existence in the desert seemed little more than fanciful legend. But astonishingly, the Bartlett's now knew that somewhere out in the desert, there were elephants living among the dry, sandy dunes. The Bartlett's two microlight planes enabled them to explore the furthest corners of the Namib Desert. Originally, they had only planned to stay in the Namib for a short time, but the desert gradually began to work its magic. They became increasingly fascinated by an animal which shared their nomadic habits, the mysterious Namib elephant. Along the skeleton coast, several dry riverbeds reach from far inland to the sea. These natural highways are ancient game trails, and it's here that the elusive desert elephants are most often seen. Every so often, the elephants had to cross the forbidding dunes that separated the riverbeds, a spectacle rarely seen and never captured on film. Sparsely scattered along the edges of the dunes are natural water holes, at one of these, called Ausies, the Bartlett's found deep furrows on a steep slip face. They were unmistakable proof that elephants had recently been here. Gee, look at them. That's sure steep where they came down. That'd look magnificent, but they probably do it only at night time. That's the trouble. We'd be lucky to ever see it. Des and Jen were determined to film the elephants descending the slopes. In this vast wilderness of rolling dunes, it's almost impossible to keep track of animals by vehicle. Even a herd of elephants could vanish here. The only way the Bartlett's could follow the herd would be from the air.
Almost as soon as they took to the air, the Bartlett's saw their first elephant herd. The elephants were moving towards the same waterhole where the Bartlett's had seen their tracks. It took more than an hour to land, get the camera gear together and hurry to the waterhole. We only had two oranges in the water from the drifter and um, hoped that they'd still be there when we got there. So we drove past where we would normally stop and walk in and went over onto the sand dunes and backpacked cameras half a mile to the dunes overlooking the waterhole. They approached the waterhole from downwind. The elephants are arriving. They're just in time. Can I hold? Among the elephants is a tiny calf. The herd cautiously approaches the water. Once thought to be only occasional visitors to the desert, these elephants are now known to be permanent desert dwellers. At one time, the population was 300 or more, but relentless poaching has reduced their numbers severely. very wary. The desert has forced them to become nomads, always moving on to find fresh food and water. They know the desert by heart, moving in a beeline from one oasis to the next, traversing up to 80 kilometers of bare sand. rest of the day, the herd feeds and frolics here, unaware that the Bartlett's are watching. These are perhaps the world's tallest elephants. They have huge feet and very long legs, ideal for traveling far and fast across the sand. The elephants doze off and sleep standing up. The whole herd stayed all day long, and they had a tiny baby who was less than a week old, probably only a day or two old, and that was a great thrill. Then it kept hidden for most of the day, and then late in the day, around 5.30, 6.30, the matriarch led the herd out and headed right into the dune area, which we'd never expected to see, and we haven't seen it since. In, seven, in eight and a half years, we've never seen those elephants cross that area. Calves are guarded jealously, and they're scarce indeed. In one five-year period, only seven calves were born, and just two survived. The bulls went up the slip face area, and it was late in the day, therefore their shadows came in backlighting down the dune, down the slip face, and it was a beautiful sight, and it was a highlight of our life in many ways, in that you can't plan these things, you can't set them up You've just got to take advantage of when it happens and make the most of it. There's little dots in the distance now. Yeah, where do you think they're going? I guess it has to be Ganyas, but that's another 50, 60 kilometers more. I've got a long walk tonight. Yeah. 
little baby with them too. Yeah. Probably his first trip like that. If the Bartlett's tried to follow, they would soon lose their way once darkness fell. But rare and fleeting as these encounters were, they made Des and Jen all the more determined to uncover the secret lives of the elephants of the desert. Jen, in many ways, is more cautious than I am and more thorough in, say, the pre-flight inspections of the drifter, and the same with the flying. And she's more cautious, and I'm more cowboy, as such, as she calls it. But it's a wonderful mix, because if I was as cautious as she was, we wouldn't get as much action and excitement in the flying or in the filming. And yet, I might kill myself if I didn't have her as a break to what I might do. Their destination is Ganius, a tiny but permanent waterhole on a gravel plain beyond the dunes. The Bartlett's come to stay for weeks or even months. Suri, their pet surrogate, and a friend fly with them. Establishing camp some distance from the waterhole, Des and Jen will ferry back and forth to bring in vehicles and other supplies. Months before, they had built a hide overlooking the waterhole. Now the wildlife has come to regard it as part of the scenery. Usually, one of them will spend all day filming while the other tends camp or stakes out another location. Long days alone with the desert winds are routine for them. Each day in the hide is a new experience. Des and Jen never know what lies around the corner. flock of ostrich come to water. These flightless birds may stand up to two and a half meters tall and weigh 130 kilos or more. Ostriches like these wide open spaces where their keen eyes and 60 kilometers an hour running speed save them from predators. Wave after wave of sand grouse arrive by the hundreds. They're vulnerable here, and their policy is to drink and run. Some distance from the waterhole, Des spots an ostrich on a nest. They often nest out in the open in places like this, sitting in full view. Des and Jen land nearby, where they've set up a portable hide. Every two or three days, they will edge the hide closer. Eventually, it'll be only 30 meters or so from the nest. Weeks later, some chicks have hatched. Jen creeps closer to place a microphone near the nest. She wants to record the sound of the chicks. Suri is also interested in the chicks.
but he's no match for the male. He vents his frustration by digging. ends in stalemate. During the night, an elephant has passed near the camp. They've never seen elephants here, and this one is heading north. Des and Jen hope they'll be able to follow it on its journey. They'll try to track the elephant from the air. We hurriedly put things together and flew in the drifter and tracked one bull elephant from the Ganeus water hole and you can stay with that elephant trail at 50 or 60 miles an hour without leaving a track yourself. And before too long, his single track led into a superhighway of elephant tracks. The elephant has joined others on an established trail. It's easy to follow them across the barren plain. They spot the herd, and now all the years of patient aerial surveillance pay off. The elephants are used to the plane and carry on with their journey. For Des and Jan, it's the chance of a lifetime. They'll be able to find out where the elephants are going at last. set up their cameras to overlook the elephant's centuries-old trail. OK, we're lucky. Here they come out of that power wash. They're hurrying a bit, too. Yeah. The herd appears. The elephants are moving fast, almost at a run, eager to reach water. They're now almost 50 kilometres beyond the Ganyas camp. The only place they can be marching towards must be the Hwarusib River, about eight kilometres away. They may not have been here for a year or more, but they seem to know exactly where they're going. And they're really hurrying because the, they knew that water was only five miles away. And they disappeared down this wash towards the Arusa, the main river. And this wash had been covered by vast sand dunes. Obviously, it hadn't flown for many, many years. And now these sand dunes have moved over to the rocky mountain, you might say, on the right-hand side. And uh, after they passed us, we decided to take a last flight to try and see them in the dunes. They're just in time to see the elephants reach the massive dunes and sweep over them. Jen made six complete turns, revolutions, and I kept filming non-stop for that period. And the elephants would go up this steep sand embankment and then down, running down the slip face. And sometimes they split into two groups, thinking the different way was slightly better. But they'd all join up again and go on. And it was just an incredible experience, something no human eyes had ever seen before. The next day, Des and Jen follow the elephants into the Warusib River bed beyond. There's water in small pools and fresh vegetation to feed on. They'll stay in this area for over two months before moving on again. Everything they do is driven by the need to find food and water.
Here the herd rests. They search for the fallen seed pods of the acacia trees. These delicacies are particularly sought after by the younger members of the herd. Until recent years, little was known about these desert-dwelling giants. How did they survive here? How did they find enough water and food to sustain their huge appetites? Now the Bartlett's have answered these questions and unraveled some of the mysteries of these desert elephants. From time to time, Des and Jen are joined in the desert by their daughter, Julie, her husband, Jim Bruton, and their son, Tal. For Tal, born in the United States, the adventures of his grandparents are a source of endless fascination. How you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you, Jen. Good to see you again. You brought the good weather with you. I know, it's beautiful. On his mother's lap, Tal will get his first ride in the plane to see the desert as his grandparents see it and meet some of its creatures for the first time. Des and Jen have begun. With Julie, Jim and Tal, we're hoping that they'll be able to take over the filming and so on. They're very keen on the wildlife. And Tal, from early age, has been fascinated by insects. And I hadn't realised young people could have this fascination with wildlife. Hopefully, we can all work together, go back on some of the areas I've filmed many years before and see it as a family unit, that I can show the various habitats and wildlife to them and see it through their eyes as well. The Bartlett's will remain here. They hope that the wildlife can be better protected in the future so that lions will return to the beaches and elephants will be safe in the dunes. Des and Jen Bartlett have done their best to ensure that there will be some survivors along this mysterious and beautiful skeleton coast. There's a full-colour survival guide to all the programmes in the current...